If you only train spot fighting, can you just switch to dirty tactics? Hi guys, today we're gonna talk about how to train for street and what's the difference from sport fighting and the question is often you hear or read in the internet people say well when you train sport fighting let's say kickboxing or MMA or any kind of sport uh, martial art if you need it for street you just can't switch to dirty tactics and is this even possible so the first thing we have to talk about is how your brain works when you train and when you do certain repetitions, when you train them into your muscle memory and when you get under pressure, how likely is it that you can just switch to something else? This can be as small a thing as switching to kick to another target with your kick instead to kick somewhere where you are used to uh, kick usually. And we're gonna show a few examples what I mean by let's that. Say, let's say you train all the time to kick here or to kick here, or to kick here, or even to kick to the head. Usually when you kick person there in the legs, the fight is not immediately over because you kick to this big muscle. This is the biggest muscle on human body, the biggest bone on human body. Maybe the guy is going to fall down on the ground from the kick. To knock out the guy with the kick is pretty unlikely. In the street, it would be advisable to kick the guy to the groin instead or maybe to attack the knee. If you kick through the knee, you damage the knee, the guy can't stand anymore, or he can't move properly anymore, you're safe, you can go away. If you kick him into the groin and you land the kick properly, then he will be pretty much knocked out, at least for a few seconds, and so you could also just go away and the fight is finished. So some people claim you train sport fighting, and kickboxing, let's say kickboxing, but when you need, you just can use dirty tactics, you, you can uh, kick the guy in the groin. The thing is, if you are the guy, the one who is attacking first, then of course you can kick the guy into the groin, but if you are defending yourself, so you, you get under pressure and he is attacking first, you have to evade, you have to counter without basically your thinking, you would most likely apply this technique that you have trained all the time. For your ring, for your competition, you probably are not going to change just to vulnerable targets. When you kick to vulnerable targets, the whole technique has actually to change if you want to kick efficient and effective, because kicking to the groin is different than kicking to the leg. Kicking to the knee is also different. You need different kind of body mechanics to kick efficiently to these targets. In order to kick the guy to the groin, it makes sense to use the leg that is nearer to the target. So I wouldn't use my rear leg, I would use my front leg, and you would use it the most direct path. So the foot would go from here to here in the most possible straight line for this kick. So you would use your leg like this, instead of going like this. Because far quicker and you're far faster in the target, so the opponent could react so quickly and you would land your kick safely. Same is with the knee. If you want to attack the knee, there's a certain way you can attack the knee from the front. So you would attack against the joint, like in the joint lock. When you do the joint lock, you want to stress the joint against its movement. Same is with the side kick. If you want to kick the knee, you should kick it from the front. So you would stress the joints against its natural movement. And there's only a certain way how you can apply pressure to this. And the side kick is the best technique for this. So you would also here use the front leg because it's nearer to the target. And you would kick through the front, through the target and against the movement of the joint. And that's why for this kind of target, you need a technique like a proper side kick. These are kind of techniques you can't really use in sport fighting because you're not able to uh, damage the knee of your opponent. Mostly, in most tournaments, you're not allowed to kick to the groin. So you would never train these kinds of techniques. But in street fighting, you can certainly use them. And uh, because you have never trained this kind of techniques, you can't actually apply them under stress because you have never done it. There's nothing to recall. If you would use your hook kick to kick to the groin, and you would kick like this, it's also very likely that you wouldn't aim 
to the groin because you are not used to aim to the groin, especially under pressure when you don't think about it. So you would probably also kick where you're used to kick, lower or higher, so here or here, because you actually never kick to the groin. And that's why, two reasons, you have to train the kind of techniques that are suitable for attacking these targets and you have actually trained to attack these targets. So two things, the right body mechanics in your techniques and proper aiming to the target. And this you can train on pads and on your training partner. I would advise to train pads first to perfect your technique. You can also train alone and then a train on training partner. And you train to attack the targets and then your training partner resists and from movement you attack the targets when he's moving and when he's countering, when he's attacking. So you always try to stick to the targets instead to attack him somewhere where it's not that painful. For the front kick you would use uh, pads to attack the groin in this angle or you could attack in this angle when a place like this. When the opponent is placed like this, you would uh, use the inverted front kick. You have to know how to kick here and how to kick here to the groin, this side, this side and this side. And this is not something you would train in sport fighting. And you have to do a lot of repetitions, so when you need it, you recall it without of thinking and the guy attacks you and he comes forward and you defend yourself and you're just kicking without thinking there where you are used to kick in your training with thousands, a hundred thousands of times. Same is with the side kick. You train to land with the heel on the target and then later on you train to land here and then you can gear up, you, get, uh, you take protection and you uh, kick to the knee. So, but always train safe because no protection gives you 100% protection. The same idea applies for the finger uh, jab in the eyes. So when, if you never have trained a proper finger jab, so how you can efficiently throw a finger jab and then also aim to the eyes, not always aim to the, let's say, chin with your punches or to the heads. Uh, most people just aim to the head. They don't even aim to the chin when they punch, when you use punches. You should actually aim to the throat, so uh, you hit the throat is good. If he lowers his head, then you hit the chin is uh, also good. This comes actually from Jack Dempsey. Also here, a proper technique is, uh, is important to use the finger jab efficient. Maybe the opponent is here, he closes in and you train your finger jab. So same idea, if you have never done this, there's no way you would actually apply this under pressure. How you would use this? It's no muscle memory. For the people who claim sport fighter, he can also poke the eyes. If he has to defend himself and he gets under pressure in the street and people just attack him, he's going to apply these techniques that he has already done thousands of times. So there will no be such a thing uh, like a finger jab. You will never see a Mike Tyson doing a finger jab when somebody is launching at him. So guys, so much for this subject. So always remember, you can only apply this that you have trained into your muscle memory. Don't get fooled to think you train something and then you can just switch to different tactics if you have never trained this enough. And uh, a weekend seminar is not enough, so you have to train really a lot of this repetitions so you're really able without of thinking. Let's say a guy is grabbing you. So I have trained thousands of times from here to go to the eyes or to do the side kick here, or, or if I'm closer, to go to the groin. So it depends, these are the targets I would attack immediately in this situation, instead of doing something uh, rather more undirect or more sporty, so to say. So guys, well, thanks for watching and see you next time.